like when somebody else records it it only shows you the uh the total time yeah all right we're recording whenever yeah. you're ready <clears throat> all right welcome back to blue by 90 we are here after the msu game and if you can't hear it in my voice we're all fucking depressed. <laughs> so I don't even want, I don't even have to ask you guys how you're doing today because I already know the answer. You know what? I'm not even depressed. I was telling you guys. I'm just numb. I've got no feeling at all about Literally. anything. About anything. I'm past depressed, guys. There's it's, it's like this kind of limbo feeling that's almost like heaven because I don't feel any pain anymore. It's just like nothing. And it's kind of <laughs> nice compared to what I was feeling yesterday. I mean, that was awful. Yeah, the nightmare hasn't ended for me, so I'm still in the depths of hell. Uh, Jack, you've found a way to push through to the other side, so whatever you, you, you're you taking, uh, just pour some up for me, too. <laughs> yeah, honestly, I need some of the juice. I, I just, I was like, I mean, obviously yesterday was like one of the worst days of our lives, but then I was like, this morning, you know, I woke up hungover, and... I recorded the pod, the podcast with Spath, and then I was just, like, angry immediately, first thing in the morning. <laughs> and then I was like, all right, I can, like, take a breather. But then social media started, and all of my Sparty friends just started fucking going nuts. And then we we started getting dragged by Spartans on Blue by 90 as well. <laughs> Dude, Mike, Mike Solentino, Mike Sully. On Twitter, he like he texted me. He was like, "Dude, you guys are getting roasted right now on Twitter." And I was like, "Dude, I haven't even seen anything." So he sent me a couple screenshots, and I started dying laughing. The like one, that, the that one South Park one. I mean, South that Park one was like, so good. I mean, dude, we have like these bold predictions, predictions, and I think even Spartan fans were like, "Yeah, we're gonna get blown out this game." Like we all thought it was gonna happen. That's the and thing. Then, it's like we don't look like we're stupid because it was literally everybody, including them, thought oh, that, yeah. that was gonna happen. But some of the stuff, like, that was maybe the one thing where I was like, okay. Like, I mean, that's funny. Good work. Like, you put it in. Like, put in the creativity. The other one's a bunch of fucking idiots. But yeah. that one I could appreciate for sure. I, I, I like that one, too. Um, one of them said that none of us have hugged a girl, which is false. I didn't see that one. <laughs> I have hugged multiple women in my life. So they can I haven't suck that. first base, guys. I've gotten to first base before. I don't know I, about you guys. Well, we all have mothers, so this person is definitely that's, wrong. That's true. Yes, <laughs> yes. I, I have, t- I've touched a boob once. I touched one. <laughs> like boob. a bag of sand. <laughs> <laughs> Feels like a bag of sand. Dude, one of my other favorite ones. It was like, uh, I bet all these four dudes. Uh, what was it? It's like they'd respond with. Yeah, I went to Ross and like my dad will sue you and like da, da, da. <laughs> like, you know, that shit fucking had me rolling. It was just like hit after hit after hit, and I saw that one. I was like, man, this is just fucking funny. I'm glad I can appreciate this That's and laugh amazing. at it. We gotta laugh through the pain. I mean, oh, yeah. this is just like, dude, I don't, I. Do we want? What do we even want to say? I don't even know what where we want to start here. Obviously, it was we're 21 and a half point favorites. And this team looked like they, I think, I think this is where I want to start first and foremost, before like we get into any, like who played bad and who played good, that team looked like they didn't even want to be in the stadium. Michigan looked like they were like, you know what? If the game happens today, great. If it doesn't, whatever. Like why was nobody, I even saw a um, tweet where like Milton had a great run and it picked up like 15, 20 yards and literally one person, it was right along the sideline. There was one guy clapping. Everyone else just stood there like fucking statues. I'm like, dude, this is a rivalry game. And there's nobody in the stands. Like, you have to create your own energy. But they were so flat. And that's so crazy to me because last week, I swear we saw a quote or something. I can't remember who it was. I feel like it was one of the D linemen. Like, Donovan Jeter, I think it was him. It was like... You know, we've never felt like more of a team or so close knit as this team that I'm with right now. And then, like, you see shit like that and you're like, what the, like, what? What is going on here? Yeah, there's just 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 a mess. Just no, like, sense of urgency. Everybody just felt like lackadaisical through the TV. I, I don't know. I was sitting there, like, trying to get hype for them from, like, the living room, you know? Mm hmm. 
Yeah, I, I mean, we talked about a, a lack of sense of urgency is perfect, is a perfect way to put it. It was like, I mean, obviously they thought that they were going to go out there and just steamroll them. And Mich- they thought Michigan State wasn't going to put up a fight, which is so stupid. Because, yeah. you know, even though it's not D'Antonio, they're still obviously out for blood. And especially after the whooping that Michigan put on them last year, they're going to come in and, you know, try to do their worst and they did and it was just like I don't know it it felt like the whole like from coaches on down nobody wanted to be there nobody was like I'm gonna be the one that gets this team going and credit where it's due right I mean Mel Tucker had his guys fired up uh and they played very mistake free football for the most part so I mean especially coming off that devastating loss that they had to start the season go right into a rivalry game and come in hyped up and ready to play I I have to give credit where it's due yeah I mean they came out as a better team I mean I think Rocky Lombardi was that back-to-back 300 yard games he had yeah shit man I mean fuck I'm rooting for the Spartans right now like what's going on here like it's it's embarrassing it's fucking embarrassing what happened yesterday well I mean the thing is like our defense looked like it it was so everything was rolling obviously against Minnesota and things were going well and we looked like we had it all together and then how I like to say is like everyone knows what their game plan is until they get punched in the mouth Mm -hmm. Michigan got punched in the mouth yesterday and then had no fucking clue they were deer in headlights like what do we do now a team actually like pushed back and (laughs) our our corners obviously had no clue what to do against three star freshmen. Like what are you, I, I don't know. Why was it all uh, Rashad Bateman? We, we could handle, but we can't handle a three star freshman. And, and the thing that pisses me off the most is we, this all happened early in the game and we made zero adjustments. Don Brown didn't make one single fucking adjustment the whole game and just left those corners on an Island, even though they were getting slaughtered. Yeah. And Vince Gray was supposed to be our top cornerback. He was the guy that was getting targeted the most. And I think he gave up 200 yards to that freshman. You're talking about three star freshman, dude. I mean, that's where your coat, the coaching staff needs to help out, you know, have your back for your players and put them in a situation where they they can succeed. And if you see this guy can't play one-on-one man coverage, you need to help him. And and like you said, bro, like they didn't make any adjustments and they just left that guy on a fucking island and just continued to let him get torched the entire game. Yeah, and it's awful. I mean, when we had Craig Rowe on here, he said it, right? It's about one-on-one matchups all, all over the field. Um, and as the defensive coordinator you need to be aware of these matchups and be trying to get favorable matchups for your team right so if you know vince gray is covering somebody who can torch him you got to make an adjustment and for don brown to not make those adjustments that leaves me scratching my head like what are we doing and and daxon hill came out after the game and said yeah we actually prepared for the run we didn't prepare for them to pass on us (laughs) what what they're like, playing for half the game there. What, like that so you no just sense. you just thought that they were going to run the ball and be complacent with that and not try and throw it up on us? I thought I they had, after Rocky threw for 300 yards in game one, like that exactly. makes no fucking sense. Yeah, I thought they had a non-existent run game against Rutgers. Yes, they did. He all they could do was throw. So why are? Oh my god. Oh, that's so frustrating. And, and, and like obviously. Our secondary going into it, all we talked about was how that was our one weakness on defense. You think they're not going to try to exploit that? All all Rocky Lombardi did in that game, especially in the first and second quarter, literally three-step drop and just throw it up. And he, he wasn't making spectacular throws. He did he did make he, he, had, he had a few good he had a few he dropped a couple there. dimes for yeah. sure. And he, those yeah. I can't take anything away from him. He had a couple dimes, yeah. But I, but I, it was more like it. Was, I'm not saying that he didn't play well. Mm-hmm. I'm more so saying it was their game plan, literally to just loft it up one on one and see what happens. And they, yeah. it was either complete or they drew a PI call 90% of the time. 100%. Yeah, and I, I that was really interesting too because their receivers were able to get like some separation and then make those plays. Well. I mean, maybe I'm, I'm getting ahead here, but I felt like our receivers were not able to get separation 
which put more pressure on Joe Milton to try and make plays. Yeah, and even, I mean, like you said, Keon, not to get too far ahead, but two weeks in a row, not, I'm, I don't want to harp on Joe Milton and saying that he's playing poorly because I, I think, I mean, he's a first-year guy, or he's this is his first year starting, but he hasn't been able to prove that he can throw a deep ball yet and hit somebody open. Right, yet, it hasn't happened yet. It has not happened yet. So I don't know what needs to happen to, to be to be fixed there. But if you can't be a deep ball threat, a quarterback, who's going to who's going to guard against that when you haven't had one? I don't think he's had a completion over 25 yards in the air through the air. I don't think he's had a completion over 25 yards he, in, the, in the first two games. There was there was one play where he had Ronnie Bell so wide open down yeah. the seam in mm-hmm. the middle and he overthrew him by 20 yards. And I'm just like, dude, I, I, I just think. I know he's got this cannon for an arm, but like he was so open. All he had to do was loft it in there and yeah. it, and Ronnie Bell, it, he doesn't even have to put it on a dime, which that bothered me. But there were definitely a couple times, like you said, that he threw into some really tight windows and made some great throws, but he had to do that because they weren't, they, they weren't letting uh, our, our receivers weren't getting separation. And to me, the reason for that was, they were able to drop a lot of guys back into the zone because our run our run game was non-existent. Literally non-existent. How many times is Josh Gaddis going to run inside zone fucking three times? He, he literally ran it so many times, and we had negative yards on like half the plays. Yeah, it was unsuccessful all game. The O-line didn't play well. Mason had a couple times where he, he missed his blocks. I mean, it was just like it just seemed like they weren't ready for the game. Which is crazy to me. It's a rivalry game. First year coach, you know, like he he's gonna want to win that he can hang his hat on, and you're not gonna come out prepared. I mean, come on. Yeah, I I feel like the running back by committee came to bite us a little bit in this game, because like none of our running backs could really catch a rhythm, and we were trying to like force a couple things. And I was going like, why are we not putting Hassan Haskins in there? He had a couple runs that he was able to get outside and gain some yards. And then all of a sudden he disappeared. And we're, we're putting in uh, Charbonnet or Corum, which are great guys. But I'm like, dude, go with the hot hand here a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it, it seemed to me, and I was wondering, you know, after game one, obviously we had so many guys play and all of them pretty much succeeded, right? Yeah. But, so, but it's, it, I was wondering... Okay, are we still gonna go with that all year, or is are people gonna kind of emerge? Are we gonna kind of roll with some people? And it just felt like Josh Gaddis had like he had to check the box on every running back getting you know a certain amount of plays in or something. And I'm like, I I don't know. He just he, I'm I'm not sold on Josh Gaddis as a play caller yet. That's for sure. Yeah, I mean you can't be. And like and like you were saying, Kalen, I mean. Running back by committee seemed to have kind of killed us. Where I think Hassan and and Corum had were probably the two best running backs of that game. At least they had like moments where right. they strung a couple of things together. It's like keep those guys in if they're hot. You know, don't put somebody else in. There's no need to. I I know I've said it in the past, and we just talked about how Minnesota Week One there was multiple guys in, and they all did really well. But I don't know. I'm so torn on what should happen. But if there's a hot hand, man, you just got to feed him. That's where I'm at now. Yeah, do you think that the Minnesota game was kind of just a facade, right? Now that we've 100%. seen Minnesota 0 and 2, yeah, I mean, Ro, what do you Minnesota think? Minnesota looked fucking terrible against Maryland, who just got ran out of the stadium by North Northwestern. Western. <laughs> they put up three points on Northwestern and then came out and they they were struck or sorry, Maryland came out. Maryland had three points on Northwestern and then came out and we're scoring at will on Minnesota. So, yes, I think that we should not have been three touchdown favorites on uh, against Michigan State because that Minnesota team is bad, really yeah. bad. And yeah. I think that we did what good teams do to bad teams uh, against Minnesota. We dominated them, but that was we we're, we're not as as good as as we were advertised. The the bigger part to me is is um I thought the the what what Michigan has struggled with in the past in these big games is they come in looking so unprepared, right? And I was like, okay, 
versus Minnesota, we looked like we were clicking on all cylinders. That team looked like it was ready to play from play one through play, through the end of the fourth quarter. And then it was like two different teams. Now all of a sudden Michigan comes out this week and it was like they didn't know where to go on the field, what was going on, and just didn't look like they wanted to be there. And I'm like, all right, guess we haven't figured that one out. Um, and to me, a team really – has the personality of their head coach and our team does not have a good personality and it's not a, which is so weird because it's not a like fight to the death. Like we're going to be there for our brothers, like ultra competitive and I'm just going to do everything I can not to lose this game. But that's like what Harbaugh is, right? Like we talked about it with Craig. He's like this guy that literally won't lose in fucking checkers. And so I don't understand why he doesn't have that mentality now in on the football field. It doesn't look like at least he almost looks like D'Antonio did last year, just tired and wants to be done. Mm-hmm. Oof, yeah, that's, he that's really just sad. He really does. He looks like he's like, all right, I get paid fucking $8 million a year. And so if you guys want to keep paying me, great. If not, whatever. But this is like, that game yesterday, it was my opinion, maybe outside of like the Iowa 2016, that was probably the worst Michigan game of the Harbaugh era. My opinion. Because oh, 100%. it was yeah. like, like there was no way that you could afford to lose that game. And li- from top to bottom, it was an absolute debacle. Defense, offense, play calling, coaching, like literally the coaching staff isn't challenging plays that they hundred percent should be challenging. It's just like, there's something so wrong here that it like, I'm pulling my hair out, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of speechless, honestly. I, like, I, it's, I, know. It's, it's like, I was, I was, I was recording this morning with, with Spath and I was like fuming, but I like couldn't put sentences together because I couldn't like the words aren't there. Yeah. It, it's so hard. Like, how, how it's unexplainable, really. Tell me how Jim fucking Harbaugh, who is, you know, supposedly one of the great football minds and football coaches in all of the world, you know, what he was at one point, at least now yeah. he doesn't seem like he, he's a shell of that man that was at Sim, San Francisco. He's a shell of the man that was here in 2015 and 2016. Yeah. And but still. In year six of Jim Harbaugh, you're telling me he can't out game plan, out coach Mel fucking Tucker, who hasn't had a winning record ever in his life at Michigan State, where the the difference in talent is beyond like it's so wide that there's no way that they should even be close in that football game. You're telling me that you are going to get out coached by a guy that's in his second game ever and just got fucking housed by Rutgers. How does that happen? How does that happen? It's mo- it's so unacceptable. It's not even funny in a program that D'Antonio left in absolute shambles, Absolutely shambles. Yeah. I mean, like, you, when you, when you look at that, when you're talking about the talent and Sparty's getting these three star guys, a few four star guys, and Michigan's getting a lot of four-star guys and a couple five-star guys. If you're not beating that team, it, it's not the talent that's stopping you from winning. It's the coaching. And or, uh, they might even have a better chance without coaching, just playing on their own because they're so talented to beat that less talented team. I mean, it's so mind-numbing and just frustrating that – your team is so much more talented. Your coach is supposed to be one of the top five, ten coaches in all of college football. And you can't beat a first-year guy that just lost to Rutgers the week previous. That's a fucking mess. If you dig in even a little bit more, it gets, like, even worse than that, right? Because you're saying, like, three and a couple four-star guys. One of those four-star guys is Antoine Simmons, who went to Pioneer High School yeah. across the street. How are you missing out on recruits who then become, you know— Big Ten all team when the all you got to do is step out your office to watch the guys high school games. So or, you know, uh, Devontae Dobbs over at Belleville. So not only are they kicking our ass in the stadium, they're kicking our ass on the recruiting trail. And as far as I'm concerned, after what I saw yesterday in the film room. So like all around the film room. 
I'm definitely all around. I'm just like so frustrated with this program after that terrible loss that I'm like, dude, we need to do something. I mean, it has to start with me. Like for, for me, it has to start with at least putting some pressure on Jim Harbaugh. It doesn't seem like there's any pressure on Jim Harbaugh. Like, Hey, if you don't succeed, we're going to fire your ass. No, there's literally nothing in the, the whole department, whatever, whoever you want to say it's on. But it's just like there's literally never been like, uh, you know, obviously the fans in, in the national media have called or have said that he's on the hot seat. Nobody in Ann Arbor has been like, yeah, I think that, you know, it's a do or die game here for you. No, it's it's Not it feels all. like he's so complacent and just like he knows this is this is what we've got and this is what we're going to live with. And then it goes down from him to. Don Brown as well. Don Brown doesn't seem like he's going anywhere. So, I, I mean, you, it, if it, if it was me, I'm sorry, Don, you are gone today, today. Like I actually, I've always loved Don Brown and we've all been hardball guys too, but like, mm-hmm. this shit's unacceptable, man. You can't tell me that you just sit there and during that whole game and you don't make one adjustment and leave all your guys out there down round. And like, there has to be repercussions for your actions there. Come on. You, you're, you're a great football mind. I don't understand the stubbornness. It's so fucking frustrating, man. Yeah. I mean, we, I mean, we all saw on Twitter last night, Michigan, Michigan Twitter was going crazy about, all right, this is a joke. It's a fucking mess. Fire Harbaugh, fire Don Brown. There needs to be pressure on these guys. And and I'm and you know, I'm at the point where I'm like, man, I've always been team Harbaugh. I've always had it like rooted for him, want to keep him as a coach. Same with Don Brown. And now I'm like, man, this is just it's a joke. Something needs to change. And the only thing that's really gonna change anything is if one of those two guys is gone. Yeah, I mean, I've always been a Harbaugh guy too. And uh I've definitely been a Don Brown guy. And I think that they're both good coaches. And from where we were and where they've taken us. 100% respect it, and I think it deserves nothing but praise. But I think if we want to take that next step to become elite and compete at the elite level, I'm sorry to say it, but I just don't think these are those are the guys at this point. So question for you guys. We've, we've seen this recently with the Lions. Are we at a point where we're just being whiny little bitches and we've got Jim Caldwell and the program's in, in like a fine state? Or is it something different where it's like, okay, really, you know, the grass is greener on the other side. We need to find somebody else. And Michigan really should have that opportunity to take the next step. Or do we get a new head coach? We go back to the Richard Brady Hoke era. That's where I'm stuck. I'm like, man, we saw with the Lions. We've seen it with Michigan already once before. What happens now? I was in that boat. I was 100% in that boat of, the grass isn't always greener. We did this with Lloyd Carr, and it it worked out horrendously. Like, yeah. it was a fucking debacle for eight years, right? It wasn't just, like, a couple years. It was almost a decade. Yeah. But now, it's time for a change of scenery, man. I don't think Jim Harbaugh will ever gain the trust of this fan base back. And outside of beating Ohio State, which, let's face it, the chances this team beats Ohio State are less than zero at this point. So... Yeah. It just it to me it's more about somebody new coming in without the expectations to be a national title contender in year one. That that's what came with Harbaugh, and it's really been the problem in my opinion ever since he got he stepped foot in Ann Arbor because he th- it was just unrealistic expectations because Michigan's never been there. You know, like 1997 was one year, right? They ever they've always been top ten. Big Ten championships, obviously, but like Michigan has not been on Ohio State's level in a long time. And everyone expected him to turn it around like that. And he did really well in 2015 and 2016. So the expectations got even higher. And now it's just back to nine and three Michigan, which is where that's what Michigan is. And so for me, it's somebody that somebody we have to bring in somebody who is young, new, I would rather have them have zero connections to Michigan. Honestly, I don't want there to be any expectations of them coming in. I'm all fuck the whole Michigan man thing. Like just get whoever's best for the job. 
You know who who they should have connections to? Ohio State. Luke Fickle. Go go throw six million dollars at at Luke Fickle. He's, he's still at Cincinnati, Cincinnati, right? Cincinnati. Yeah. Killing. I mean, didn't we see that with uh God damn, correct me if I'm wrong. Where did Bo come from? Bo Schembechler. Did he yeah, come he was from an Ohio assistant State? at Ohio State. Yes. I mean Ohio State did it with Greg Madison. Yeah, if we can pluck him from Ohio State, I say we do it. They're doing shit right. I say let's set our, our sights even higher than that, right? I'm like, dude, yeah, I, I like wanna see I wanna see, you know, here's a, a crazy one. Deion Sanders, right? Coach at what Jackson State, I think. Um, yeah. or I want to see people who can win at the highest level. Give me like Sean McVay. Give me like, um, gosh, what is that guy's name? The OC at the Chiefs. Yeah. Those are the kinds Benjamin. of guys. Yeah, that guy. Yeah. I want to see those guys because they are offensively minded and they're young and creative. But I mean, usually you don't see people take a step down to college. So whatever. But well, Kalen, who was your uh, you were telling me yesterday? You you might have been a little intoxicated and can't remember, but you had some you had a bold pick yesterday for head coach for Michigan. Oh, here's a yeah, very bold. Tom Brady. <laughs> He's in his last last year at the NFL. <laughs> Michigan man. <laughs> Thank you for cheering me up, Kalen. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Tom that would Brady. Be incredible. Come back. Hey, on that on that same note though, an actual one that I've heard swirling around, Tyrone Wheatley. Mm. He, he was a he was a coach he was, here, an assistant yeah. here. Um, he I believe he's coaching somewhere else. Jaguars. Now. I think. Is he with the Jags? Yeah. I mean, he's a Michigan man, I know, so that like fits that. But like, at least I think it, it, he's like a Juwan Howard type, young guy. Probably will do really good on the recruiting trail and. You know, has a, a mantra. He knows what it takes to win at Michigan, which we fucking said that about Jim Harbaugh too. So now that I'm now that I'm like saying that out loud, I'm like, fuck, man. Um, <laughs> Luke Fickle. I like I like what you Denard said, Luke Robinson. Fickle. Give me the fucking Ohio State connection. I think that's what we need. It's yeah, like plucking it's- somebody from Alabama, plucking somebody from Clemson. Like we need to pluck somebody from a winning traditioned program program that's won in the last twenty years. And that's yeah. not going to happen at Michigan because it hasn't happened at Michigan. See, I would be all on board for Luke Fickle if, like, if Cincinnati beat, like, a top five team out of nowhere, right? Cause but, but still, you see Cincinnati doing so well right now. What kind of recruits do you think they have? That means you have good coaching if you're if you're ranked that high and you're beating teams and you're blowing them out, no matter and what. It, he level. actually has landed a couple really good four stars at Cincinnati, too, which is not – think about – think about – being in the in the state of Ohio and trying to compete with Ohio State for recruits like yeah. that's hard to do so and, and when you play in the fucking whatever American conference or whatever they they play in like <clears throat> I don't know I'm all in on Luke, Luke Fickle it would actually make me super happy because Michigan State tried to get him and he said no um so maybe <laughs> you know but I'm also pretty sure he hates Michigan so um yeah, good but money talks Good. Talks, I hope I talks. need somebody to come in who fucking hates Michigan enough to change the program. Yeah, <laughs> because I Thank hate Michigan you. too. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That's where I'm fucking at, man. Oh man, it's just I, it's so frustrating. Uh, yeah, I I just I mean the the other problem though is the financial situation for the athletic department right now is so bad. I don't see them firing Jim Harbaugh. They would have to pay him out. Money. Yeah. They would have to buy him out ten million dollars, and this year they've had they've already had to make all the employees take pay cuts. So how do you, if you're Ward Manuel, say, yeah, everyone's taking a pay cut, but we're gonna pay Jim Harbaugh ten million dollars not to work here anymore? Need those boosters to throw some money out there. Fucking Tom Brady. And honestly, the program. In all honesty, it's gonna be whoever Stephen Ross wants to uh, wants to have it. Because <laughs> the money bags, yeah. Really- owns michigan at this point yeah yeah i mean jumping back to some of the stuff floating around in the rumor mill can we kind of talk about uh bob shoop yeah Mm -hmm. so yeah there's like some rumors out there unconfirmed uh that bob shoop is no longer the safeties coach and he hasn't been since september I, i couldn't even tell you what he looks like so i couldn't even tell you if he's been on the sideline or not but i but yeah we saw that from Chris Bayless at the Wolverine um, dot com, I believe, um, throwing that out there right before we started recording. So whether that's significant or not, I mean, 
That's Jeez. pretty wild that it would just be announced now and nobody Jim Harbaugh, this. pick up the phone and call Charles Woodson. Say, I need a safeties coach. I mean, call somebody. Somebody. It, apparently, the, the rumor is that they've had a grad assistant coaching our safeties this whole time. Call your fucking Michigan, man. Do you know how many people would drop literally everything they're doing to come coach here? For free. Like, literally for, for free. free. Yeah. 100%. Like, you telling me, I I understand the timing probably was was the biggest problem, but you're telling me that you could literally call anybody at at ninety ninety out of 120 schools in college football, and their safeties coach would just be like, "Yep, I'll be there in an hour." Like, yeah. So so that frustrates me even more as to what happened yesterday because we haven't had somebody fucking coaching our secondary. What the hell? You got to be fucking kidding me. It's a mess. What? Let's, and we just let's, didn't know about it. They just like fired a coach without just saying anything. What? <laughs> God, it's fucking. Th- does anybody have any positives from that game yesterday? No, <laughs> fuck no. There are no positives from all day yesterday. The only positive is that I blacked out. That is the only positive. Oh, man. God. I have one positive. Let's hear it. Give me something, man. I this think my brutal. zero to ninety last week was that Joe Milton was going to throw for three hundred yards. He did get to three hundred. He hit three hundred on the dot. God. I said three hundred yards and three TDs, so he was only three touchdowns short. <laughs> so, <laughs> so let's kind of jump into some of that. Did you guys think that Joe Milton played poorly? I no, I think our offensive line played poorly. Yeah. I don't. I I think that Joe Milton didn't play great. He made some really good throws. He made a lot of the throws that he needed to. Um, but it was the run game that, that when you can't get the run game going like that, you can't, it, it, it all has to start with that. Cause then they know that you, you have to pass and they can drop back. I don't think he played poorly again. I haven't watched back. What's what, um, you know, I haven't looked at most of the throws. He missed a couple big ones. Um, which like are just necessary to have, but I don't think he played terrible. It's I'm not like, Oh fuck Joe Milton. Like he's not the guy anymore. Um, to me, it's more on coaching. Like, Hey, you, let's have a game plan for a guy that's in his second start ever and make it easy for him to get in a rhythm. That's more what it is for me. Yeah. I mean, I think the O line definitely struggled. One thing I did love about Joe Milton, from what it sounds like at the post-game presser, and he was asked about the O-line and how everybody played, and he was like, you know what, it's not anything uh, that we didn't see on film from MSU. It's all on me. I mean, he he just took a real leadership role there to take it on himself, to blame himself for that game, then putting it on any of his, any of his teammates. So I would love to see for that to play into the next week where these guys are like, all right, I'm going to fight for this fucking guy. He's not throwing me under the bus. He's taking all the responsibility for all this when we know it wasn't his fault. And maybe they'll throw, they'll show some fire and be able to beat a good Indiana team. But if they don't fucking do that, we're fucked the rest of the season. We're going 4-4 four and four like a lot of people predicted. I have no faith in this team right now. Well, and then I also want to ask about the Wildcat, because I'm not a fan of the Wildcat formation, but it seems like that one pass from Hassan that got batted down was like the entire game. Because if mm-hmm. that pass was caught, we would have won the game. Mm-hmm. But what's your guys' thoughts Pe- on Wildcat? People are hating on the on that play call, but he's wide open. Yeah. He's literally wide open. And I as I actually don't like the I, I agree with you. I don't like the Wildcat because essentially, obviously, other than that play. Everyone knows what the fuck you're going to do when you line up in Wildcat. You don't have a quarterback in the game. And so when you take out your incredibly mobile and strong-armed quarterback that apparently, you know, you have a ton of confidence in and then use your running back to throw the football, it was like they were overthinking. Josh Gaddis was overthinking a bit like, dude, just run the Cam Newton play that we were, ran against Minnesota so many times, and it's just an outside zone where Joe Milton just fucking bowls over somebody. Like, or run fucking Ben Mason up the middle. God <laughs> damn it. Like, why are we trying to do trickeration when we're on the one-yard line? Yeah, don't fucking give Ben Mason the ball, I'll tell you that, because he's going to fucking fumble it, I'll promise you that. But I'm with you. I think I... 
Joe Milton could have easily made that play where it could be a read where he can either run it or he can do a little Tebow jump pass like Haskins was trying to do. But I also think that Gaddis was getting a lot of hate, like you said, Ro, on Twitter because that play, it wasn't, it didn't end up being a touchdown. But it, had that been a touchdown, people would have been praising his creativity right there, which bothers very the true. fuck out of me. Bothers the fuck out of me. I thought it was a great creative play. Thought it could have gone very well. Literally, he throws it a half inch higher, and it's a fucking touchdown. And then Josh but, Gaddis is a genius. Right, exactly. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm, I, I, and I'm, and I am not somebody that loves a wildcat either, but I do think the creativity of that play could have been a huge, you know, difference maker. And like you said, Kalen, that was a turning point in the game. Like, I feel like all the momentum just fucking stopped and went to Michigan State, and it was just game over from there on out. Yeah, I, <clears throat> it seemed like Josh Gaddis was overthinking the whole game. Like, again, I think he's super young as a play caller. This is only his second year as a play caller, and now apparently Jim Harbaugh has given him the, the entire reins, and I think it's showing. Um, but, I mean, everything looked great last week. I just... It was two it's different teams. It was seven two different days, teams. seven days against two bad football teams, mm-hmm. and they looked like a complete opposite team. Like it's crazy. I just don't understand, man. But I, I, it honestly, like to me, the offensive line had zero push all day long, <clears throat> and that was the biggest problem. Um, because when when you Milton was not comfortable back there, he was forcing shit. And we talked about that, like, you know, before week one, he has to be comfortable in order for them to be successful. And he was not, I don't know. What do you, what do you, what do you guys think about like just individual players, you know, offensive line, running backs, wide receivers. Um, I don't, is there anybody that stood out that actually did have a good game? I think Ronnie Bell had a decent game. Um, Giles Jackson had like a first down on every single pass that he caught. Um, and Giles Jackson was looking like fucking DPJ on those punt returns though. And it made me oh. want to drop kick my TV. It was, it was the worst thing I've ever seen. I mean, come on. He had one where it was a, it was a broken play that he, that he brought back that ended up being fine. But there was a couple where I'm like, where the fuck are you going? What are you doing? But I did. I loved what I saw to Roman Wilson, another young guy, had a good game. I liked what I saw to Blake Corum. I mean, fuck, dude, Milton threw for 300 yards. I mean, you gotta you gotta give props to that. But also, he missed some big time throws. So, I don't know. I, I'm not. I'm not. By no means am I off of the Joe Milton hype train. But he was good, but he wasn't great. Yeah. And we need him to be great to for Michigan to kind of go anywhere. Cornelius Johnson is another guy. Just want to give a shout out to. Yeah. He had a couple plays too. Um, what, dude, Milton, he actually had 59 rush yards as well. So something to to He's recognize. Our leading rusher. Yeah. Like what? <clears throat> but I mean, it's this is just so baffling to me. Like, how did we beat this team by like 30 last year with Shea Patterson as our QB? Well, think right. about it. Think about this. Um, Joe Milton went, what he went 32 for 51. We've been crying. We've been begging for them to throw the ball 50 times. Yeah. And so now like for, for them to finally throw the ball 50 times and for it to be a travesty is so disappointing. Like I, uh, and that goes back to what you said earlier. If Michigan can't run the ball and they know that you're just going to pass it, it's going to make it a little bit tougher to actually be able to get big plays out of it. Yeah, it's funny because we asked him to throw the ball 50 times, but we also asked him to score more than 24 points. <laughs> no true. shit. No shit. But that gets, I mean, I think he threw the ball 50 times and how many of them were dinks and dunks. What frustrated, you know what? Let's talk about the last drive for Michigan. It was, they had four and a half, five minutes left on the clock and they acted like they had a whole quarter left awful time management we were we were checking down to the running back on nearly every single play and i'm just like hey guys talk about a sense of urgency like uh you you're down 10 you know you're not down three (laughs) like you have to score here and then you have to leave enough time to get the ball back because you're not going to get an off or an onside kick and we acted like it was like uh you know what? 
if we score here, great, but it might just take a while. I don't know. I, like we, there was no game plan to try and move the ball down the field in a in a quick matter of time. Yeah, I think that still comes back to our wide receivers not getting separation, right? And then Joe's like, shit, no one's open. I just got to dink it off. Or I have to take off and run, right? Like, that's also where I'm kind of like, get us. Come on, man. Like, you had this whole speed and space thing. We supposedly got these super fast receivers. If they're all super fast, why isn't there like five yards in between them and the defender downfield? I haven't. I don't think I've seen one play where that's happened. Yeah, and that goes back to having your coaches set your players up for success. I mean, you got all these athletes, do something with them. Put them in plays that we know they can run well. And it just doesn't seem like it's happening. Yeah, and the other thing that they have not done on offense is that I actually said, I think I said this last week, I want to see Joe Milton, let's move the pocket. If the pocket's collapsing a lot, let's get him on the move. Let's get him in a bootleg. Let's get him, you know, let, let's at, he's mobile. So then that gives him another option of, you know, running the ball or passing it. So the creativity that I was like raving about in week one, I felt like they used so many different pieces in so many different ways. And now it, it we went so stale in game two. It was like, Two again, two different teams. I I'm just so confused on the play calling. As are we all. <laughs> I'm at a loss for words. I've got yeah. I've got nothing. <laughs> yeah. I'm funny. sorry to the listeners out there who are coming for like answers because we have we, <laughs> we're all over the place and we're just like fuck man what is what is going on? I but, mean especially when you see two different teams in back to back weeks. There's not there's not a whole lot of consistency in what's going wrong. Which is which is wild. It's just like, what the fuck happened? Oh, I mean, what what bothers me about the coaching too, and that this is this is basically just like a fucking hour long rant at this point. But I'm just gonna keep ranting and venting. So go for it. <clears throat> I need somebody to listen to me, and you guys are forced to. So <laughs> Jacqueline doesn't listen to me yet. She's like, can you shut the fuck up? I'm trying to watch Hamilton <laughs> for the hundredth uh, time. Yeah, exactly. But like to me, I don't know if you guys saw this and and maybe it happened without us seeing it on the sideline, but it doesn't seem like anybody was coming off the field and no coach was like getting in their face like, hey, wake up. Like it just seemed like everybody was like, huh, things aren't working out for us today. You know, that's weird, right? Like, let's go out there and next drive and see if it turns, uh, see if we run the same thing and, and it ends up differently. There was no like, Hey, you know, the, the bow picture of him grabbing Harbaugh's face mask. Like I need to see that from somebody like get in somebody's face, fire these fuckers up. Like it just, it, it just did it. There's no fire and there's no competitiveness there at least there wasn't on Saturday and which is so frustrating because after week one, it did look like that. Mm-hmm. And then in all those player interviews, they're like, this team is different. The vibes different. It's mm-hmm. a, we're all, we're all in this together. We're feeling like it's, you know, it's just a, a different room now. And then you come out after saying all that shit. And I'm like, you lied straight to our face. So <laughs> yeah. You. Yeah. I feel, bet- I feel betrayed, man. I feel betrayed. <laughs> Definitely feel betrayed. <laughs> I feel like we were sold like we were sold like a PS5, and then we got home and we opened it it's up. Fucking GameCast. Like, yeah, it's like a Sega <laughs> cast, like or whatever, like Dreamcast. Yeah. That was a great system. Hey. <laughs> it's like those one things where it's like, uh, yeah, you buy like an iPhone 11 and they send you an iPhone 5 and an iPhone 6 together. <laughs> That's what we've, I've never that's seen what that. we've gotten that's so many. Oh, I don't want to put God. too much like on the players though. I do want to say that because I do think a lot of it is the coaching, even though yeah. it's up to players to execute, right? And you, you're on the field, you got to play. But I also just feel like you know, as coach, you have to put your players in a position to succeed. And I'm not entirely sure that they did that. They didn't do that. Hundred percent. They did not do that. In Here's the thing. We all know what our weaknesses are on this team, right? 
us three don't know football that well. Like we do, but not we're not coaches. We're not analysts. No, dude, like, I'm an we're not. We're yeah, exactly. We're just <laughs> fucking drunks like that are that are watching the game at home. But like all of us can see the weaknesses so plain and clear and simple, and our that coaching staff still does not fix them. They do not address those issues and try to. You know, let's pivot and make sure that our secondary doesn't have that much pressure on them. Let's pivot and this make sure this young offensive line doesn't have much pressure on them. Let's, you know, let's get them up, moving in a different direction. Let's do, you know, speed sweeps so that's not we're, we ran inside zone a hundred times. It was just like it was, you know, they they say the definition of what insanity is just keep trying to do the same thing and hoping for a different expect, result. Yeah. We yeah. literally did that. 100%. All day yesterday. And yeah. so, yes, I agree. Our coaching staffs did not, they they didn't adapt. They didn't change anything after they saw that things weren't working out well. And that is what's frustrating to me because you're dealt this hand of, you know, a not so great offensive line and a not so great secondary. Sure. But you have to deal with it. You can't just be like, all right, so I guess we're going to suck. You know, like, but also I say we're dealt this hand, like Ambry Thomas is gone. That's the only guy that's gone. Right. Recruiting wise, this coaching staff did this to themselves. Why yeah, do we not I'm, have a better offensive line? Your, your, your first round draft pick came back. How do we have a bad offensive line at this point? Yeah. And I mean, there are even plays where Jalen Mayfield looked looked like flipped flopped around like he didn't know what the fuck was going on and it's not some there's no way that michigan state's outsmarting him i mean this guy was supposed to be a first round talent he locked down chase young last year who was a top two three pick can't even remember i mean it, it just looked like a totally different team and that's where i'm just like so blown away and shocked like what the fuck is going on yeah i'm i'm with both of you guys i got nothing to report yeah no we're <laughs> saying the same shit over and over God, dude, I uh, like. How how do you are you how do you feel about the season moving forward? Is it just like, are we are we dead inside? Are we numb? Are do we even care? Um, like I I I feel like I need to remove myself from Michigan football, honestly, for my own mental health. Oh, hundred <laughs> percent, dude. I've I literally just told you guys I'm numb. Like I've I have emotionally removed the passion of Michigan football because I'm sick of having my Saturdays ruined just because of the not even Saturdays year whole week. Like, my whole year yeah. is ruined now. hundred <laughs> percent. You think I'm joking, but now every time I have to go home That's and true. see you my Spartan friends, yeah. they are going to talk shit. Like oh. it's gotta be able to laugh at it. I guess that's what I had to do all day today. <laughs> Brutal. I think we just have to become Michigan haters. We have yeah. to hate this this program, and then maybe like because you know what's gonna what would happen like if I truly was able to remove myself, which I'm too invested, like I can't Michigan do that. would end up fucking going undefeated. A hundred percent, hundred percent. As soon as I like, if well, then I get the fuck out. Up, what are you doing? I, exactly. <laughs> Take the exactly. bullet for us. Come on. <laughs> Try to win some games here. You're over here being a fan and shit. <laughs> uh, I'll do it. I'll take. I was literally. Team. I was literally thinking that earlier today. I'm like, man, I'm just going to stop rooting for Michigan. But then, like, once they start winning, I can't be like, oh, yeah, I'm back on the bandwagon now. <laughs> I wish I I would kill to be a bandwagon fan and not care. Oh, point. my God. That has to be the nicest feeling ever. I would kill well, for that. How do you guys feel about Indiana this week? <laughs> I don't, we, we're somehow, like, four-point favorites. How are we favorites in this game? Isn't it at Indiana, too? Yeah, and Indiana's looked pretty good. <laughs> yeah, undefeated, beat a Penn State team that hung with Ohio State a little bit. I mean, they didn't play that well last week against Rutgers, but still. I guess, yeah, this is where I have to, like, what a crazy year, right? I mean, COVID, blah, 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 and then all of college football, that's about the only thing I can grasp at at this point. Look at how crazy things are this year. Wouldn't that be crazy if we came off this MSU loss and just absolutely crushed Indiana? <laughs> I could see it happening. 
We've seen two I, totally different teams right now. Like, we don't know which one's going to come out. It could be week one against Minnesota. Or it could be a team like last week and struggle. I, I, I have no expectation. I have no expectation for this game. I'm pretty sure Michigan, uh, the week after a game that they lose, I'm pretty sure they're, like, undefeated under Harbaugh as well. So, like, last year, I think they lost to... They well, lost, they I lost can't remember. to Ohio. Well, oh, you're saying the week after, yeah. They they kicked the shit out of Notre Dame right after they lost to somebody. I can't remember who it was. Must Penn State or Wisconsin? Wisconsin maybe. Yeah, something like or maybe Penn no, State. No, Penn State. It was Penn, Penn State. State. Yeah. yeah. Getting hot. It was a hot, good second half against Penn State. Then they rolled yeah, Notre that's Dame. True. That's yeah. true. Ronnie Bell. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Michigan's like th- this is what they do. They they like disappoint you, and then you come back and they show they'll show exactly what they did against Minnesota against Indiana and we'll be like maybe maybe <laughs> get some hope back yeah, everyone and then hope I'll so. be and then like it won't take long and I'll just fucking be out 100% again <laughs> Michigan Guys, is a football I, team and our fan base is the most bipolar like well, just sports program I want, of all time I want some therapist to just like come and survey Michigan fans cuz like <laughs> The, the number of depressions that I have to be, uh, like, throughout this fan base, I mean, not only is it disappointment year after year, but it's, like, crushing, soul-breaking disappointment because it's so high. Our expectations, they somehow reel us in every single year, and then nothing. Dude, I'm going to have to start doing, like, meditation at halftime or something and <laughs> try to, like, <laughs> calm back down. Yeah, instead of drinking, I'm just going to start smoking weed during the games to keep <laughs> myself calm. I'm going to be, like, taking Ambien, like, <laughs> just, just watching Fucking how the like... Hey, man, I fell asleep at halftime for the Minnesota game, and we won. Maybe I have to start doing that again. <laughs> yeah, Jack, we'll start putting you to sleep. Oh, man. <laughs> Oh, oh God! All right. Well, <clears throat> that's got to pretty much wrap it up. We've ranted yeah. for a good hour now. I uh, again, apologies to our listeners out there. This was like zero help to anybody. It probably just pissed everyone <laughs> off again, or made them so sad, so sad. Or you yeah. can commiserate with us. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. If you're sad, come be sad with us. This was like, remember, remember when we were so sad that the the season got canceled. Oh, I'd kill for the season to be canceled. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Going back to that, like, why did we have this season? <laughs> 2020 is the worst. Yeah, not not great so far. But what? We're having... Uh... So far. It's November. <laughs> <laughs> we still got hope. There's two months left, man. There's two months left. <laughs> it's only the majority of the year that sucks so and, far. And we also, in two days, have an election that's only going to rip the entire country apart so oh, it's fine God. yeah that's true <laughs> oh man that's that's news. too real we've got uh what the indiana rivals guy paul gable is he coming on on wednesday to do pregame stuff for indiana yeah, i kind of forgot about that i don't know are we going to continue this podcast i kind of just want to just let it die uh, no. uh yeah no zero to 90s this week no, no zero. i've got no hot takes other than <laughs> just fire everybody literally start <laughs> over I, I've got nothing. Yeah, we'll we'll probably have him on um at some point later this week um for uh, a little Indiana <clears throat> pregame Indiana predictions and everything like that. But I mean, I understand if you guys don't want to listen to to us talk because <laughs> I don't even want to hear myself <laughs> talk right now. So. <laughs> If I if I continue to talk about Michigan, like there's a good chance I jump off the top of my condo. <laughs> so, all right. On that note, everyone have a great week. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Well, follow us. Follow us uh, on Twitter if you want to see us get dragged by more Spartans. Oh, it's you can pretty follow- entertaining. Follow that thread yeah. from the uh, Little Brother Weekend clip we put up. It's oh. it's pretty great. Yeah, it's good shit. Good shit. All right, follow us at Blue by Ninety on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook at Blue by Ninety Podcast on YouTube. Please, I mean, send us 
send us something like beer, send us I don't weed, I don't care. Any types of drugs, I'm fine with it right now. <laughs> Literally, I'm I'm looking for new things to get into. So new hobbies, new hobbies, oh are new new drugs. Oh my god. Oh no. Uh, I oh, I I honestly am thinking like we need some new hobbies. Like I can't just continue to watch football. I mean, I can't look forward to this all week. I was actually talking. I was actually I was. I was talking to Jacqueline about this. Like, I want to move to like England or something. Hmm. Just completely remove myself from the situation. There's like zero. I'll just start a new life in England and Become be a, a soccer, soccer fan. Become yeah. a soccer fan. But I'm uh, but I'm picking the best team. Like we're just starting oh, off. Dude, already dude, at the it's you're level. get you're digging the same hole. You're just gonna be wearing your red Man U shirt out there cheering with your you know pint of beer. <laughs> and or pint of lager, whatever, and you're just gonna be pissed that they just lost to Liverpool. So it's gonna be the same problem all over again. All right, what can we do where you just don't lose? Like knitting? I can start knitting. <laughs> <laughs> I want to start. Um, Make some I'm nice scarves, to... you know? Yeah, oh it's it's God. it's all it's sweater season. It's sweater season. So. You can, yeah. <laughs> Just I, I, don't even I, have don't, a, I don't even have a comment for that. <laughs> I'm just going to, hey, follow Jack's caps on, on Instagram. Yeah. I'm going to get into uh, making heads. Dude, hell yeah. Got a bunch of new patches today. Yeah, big Buckeye fan over there, you fucker. Yeah, sick fucking logo. Mm-hmm. Dude, that's my it. 0 to 90. <laughs> Fuck sick yeah, fucking that's logo. That's my 0 to 90. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> you know? Uh, Tell it how it is. We, I honestly would be so happy if we just didn't play the rest of the season and just crowned Ohio State champions. Like, don't just save us the embarrassment. Yeah, so it's fine with me. I'm good with that. All right. Well, we've just been going on and on. There's, there was literally not one segment to this entire episode. It was just like an an hour long of venting and ranting. So we'll let you guys go. Uh, I hope you didn't make it this far, honestly. I I would be sad for you. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. We'll talk to you guys later this week. Go blue. Go blue. Oh, fuck. Go blue. <laughs> <laughs> God, we suck at this. Uh,